Thanks, Darren. Okay, so here's the abridged version of what <laughs> the abridged version of what I've just said. Um, I haven't got a clue. Uh, Relevance, irrelevant. Oh, it's all irrelevant. I tell you what is irrelevant. What everything that I just said that I didn't record is of no relevance whatsoever. Uh, that is that is the that is the wonder of talking about this. I mean, there is there's no value in any of the words. I mean, you can enjoy them. You could say that's value. Or you could um, you could hate them. You could call that negative value. But other than that, other than pleasure or <laughs> liking or disliking, there's um, there's no significance in them. Like you, like UG, you know the miserable old git UG, Krishnamurti used to say um, <laughs> he was such a miserable bastard. If ever there was an, a, you know, a, um, a bad advert for enlightenment, it was UG. <laughs> He used to uh, say his words were no more than a dog barking. Go listen to the dog barking. Well, I like that. <laughs> you know, so these words, these words aren't relevant, any more relevant than any others. But there is, there is a pleasure in speaking them. And uh, there are a few of you who get some pleasure from listening to them, which is nice. That's nice. But other than that, no, there, there isn't any. And I think I did say when I was speaking before I started recording, I did say that is one of the freedoms about, of speaking about this. You know, if you wanted to speak to someone about this, or if there was a someone asked you, you know, what are you doing on a Thursday night? Oh, I listen to this nonsense. And uh, they go, what nonsense is that? And you just started speaking about it. Don't ever be concerned about saying the wrong thing. That's one of the that's one of the great freedoms that you can no longer get it wrong. You know, you were so worried in class, all all through childhood, you were, you know, you'd never dare put your hand up. Unless you were a cocky bastard like me. I always had my hand up. But, um, you know, most kids are afraid to speak in class for fear of getting it wrong. And probably the most freeing part of this message is, is the end of the one who could get life wrong. You know, that's, that's a wonderful freedom. But there is disappointment because it is the end of the possibility of getting life right as well. You know, with a, you can't get it right or wrong. And there is disappointment in that when you want it to be, you know, correct. You know, I wanted to align myself with those who knew the truth. And if you've been on this journey of a spiritual journey, say, then of course you've been looking for truth or reality or the light or however you've um, phrased it to yourself and the wonderful terrible news is that you can't achieve that nor can you not achieve it it's neither achievable nor unachievable there's there's no one to to get either that's the wonderful freedom. This is already whole and complete. Any ideas you have of improvement are just, uh, just simply that, just ideas. And again, those ideas are neither right nor wrong.
Now that's not what I said before, but <laughs> it'll it'll do for now. <laughs> um, so yeah. The seeming death of self, and it is a seeming death. There is no death of self. There is no. There is no self to die. Is the is the seeming death of relevance and ir irrelevance? They're simply preferences, liking and disliking, but not more significant, more relevant, more important, more special. It's the end of special and ordinary. Special and ordinary just fall into each other. So the ordinary just becomes special. Special is incredibly ordinary. And I'm not just referring to human beings. I'm talking of everything that every aspect of life that you've, that you could separate out. Wow. How long? What's the time? 20 minutes. Okay. So if you've got anything you'd like to ask or something you'd like me to speak about, or anything you'd like to share, feel free. Michael has his hand up, Michael Markham. Hi, Michael. Sorry, I missed that. I was just, I was just looking through. Hi, Michael. Yeah, go ahead. I can't hear you yet. No, not yet, Michael. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you hear yeah, me now? No, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um... You said earlier in the in the first <laughs> my first introduction. Yeah. <laughs> <was> a better one. <laughs> um I say that. <laughs> no, I like them both. I uh, thought so too. I thought so as well. Yeah. 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 Uh you said I got the impression that uh in saying that, that this is it. Isn't that just another handhold to to <laughs> to hold on to that it implies yeah. that there is an it to to be? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll take it back by all means. They're, they're, they're definitely. Yeah. I'm quite happy to re rescind that phrase. There is. There is. <laughs> it's very. It's very obvious. There is no it. Yeah. No. Also, I'm sorry, in, in regard to relevance, I think relevance only applies to the individual's uh, perspective. Yeah. That there is relevance there, but it's it's kind of, a, <laughs> it's relevance only to that personal sense of self. Yeah, absolutely. And I was yeah. trying to, yeah, I, may, I didn't perhaps make that clear because this isn't saying the, that there is the, the end of that personal relevance, no. No. No, not at all. It's just not my personal relevance. <laughs> and there is a difference. I mean, it, you could say it's no difference at all, really, because if I was to say, I don't know, say, you know, my children are not relevant mm. here, that would be the greatest lie I could ever tell. Sure. And I, I wouldn't even dream of 
suggesting that at all. So, you know, the Buddhist idea of attachment as though, you know, non-attachment would be the way to whatever Buddhists are looking for. I'm not sure what they're looking for. Enlightenment, for say, you know, <laughs> that you would get there through non-attachment. That's not what this is saying. This is, this is, this is about the, I don't know, there's, you could say without me, there's even more relevance for those you love, uh, for things that you love. Yeah, the, the love of things goes nowhere at all. It's starkly, it's really much more vibrant mm -hmm. and alive that, um, I would call it love, for want of a better word, that love of what is loved, of the seeming separate things in life that are loved. And of course, ab above and beyond everything else is the, the human beings you love. That's the love for human beings becomes much more um, much more crystal clear, you know, rather than the muddy waters of how the love should be. It's just this, um, it's like a transparent, it's clear love, you could say, mm. that doesn't have all the how love should be or how love ought to be. It's just very, I don't like using this word, but I could say pure. Mm. <laughs> pure, pure sounds a bit too spiritual for my liking. <laughs> but I think what the love that I had as me seemed to be always solid always always murky a bit you know not a bit dirty you could say <laughs> whereas love is love is very crystal clear crystalline yeah hmm. so yeah no, no this isn't the end of that the relevance that things seem to have no not at all Oh, thank you, Tim. I would say it's. I would say it's probably amplified. It's it's louder, if anything. Love is certainly louder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. But but it's louder without making any noise at all. <laughs> Tim, Tim, I like what you said yesterday. There's not a person who's doing the loving, so it's just not in the way. It's. Yeah, and because because when it's my love, it's all about negotiation, isn't it? You know, it's always a negotiated love for me. And this is the end of the one who might negotiate. It's just it's like um, you couldn't you couldn't negotiate with love. It's non-negotiable. You could say love becomes non-negotiable. <laughs> it's um. Has anyone else got anything else that they'd like to? Uh... Hey Tim, I just wanted to say hi. Is that Avi? This is Avi. Yeah, we've been uh, exchanging on YouTube. Hi Avi, how are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, good. Is there anything you'd like me to? Um, no, not speak really. About? I um. I. Uh, there's no escape. No. And um, there was just uh, something I really adored about this message. And it it's so funny because it would come up in um, my life as 
all these other, all these uh, seeming things would happen where it would even be like um my both my parents are psychiatrists and Fine. my especially my father is very scientific mm -hmm. um so i kind of grew up in that you know general yeah. scheme and um then i took a lot of drugs in high school <laughs> and beyond and um there was always this um mystery because um for example um you know this is just a story but i um my uh senior thesis um for school was this project it was an i'm an artist um and my art was always trying to just I don't know what it was trying. It wasn't really trying to do anything, but um, it was about something I couldn't understand. Um, yeah. Totally beyond me. And I made this sculpture. I'm, I'm going to keep it short, but basically I wrote this essay about it and it was about all these interconnecting parts of nature and technology. And um, it was about the, um, I guess, to put it poetically, it was a, an explosion of dyadic assumptions or dualistics about mostly nature and technology, but then, you know, that would go into everything. Um, and I guess, um, I'm not going to talk about the piece really, but like, for example, like when you talk about, um, you know those little helicopter um, seeds? Oh yeah, and, um, sycamore yeah. seeds. Sycamore seeds, yeah. So um, those seeds are like, you know, we can, um, as a thing, that's a separate thing that you can point to. The seed is, um, do you get so many of these, um, figures of speech, um, analogies, ways to grasp what is, where it's designed by something. Um, and that's really just a very human way to put it, because all we know is, as a self, is um, to be a separate thing and to have a volition and to, um, you know, that makes sense. You're doing, you're making, you, you yeah. produce something. There's a cause, yeah. there's an effect. Yeah. Um, so you look at it, it it's like um, you can draw a, it's as if it's a piece of technology. So you look at the helicopter seed and it's like designed to fall farther from the trees so it can germinate. And so. Yeah, we tell a story about it. Yeah, we tell a story about it. And in this, this essay I was writing, um, it was very, it was like this very culminating, non-culmination of all of these ideas I had that were trying to just understand what yeah. the hell. And um, what happened when I would kind of explode these dualities and talk about these seemingly assumed separate ideas and how they pertain to each other was this, um, well, you zoom out and it becomes almost like a vast network of stuff that relate to each other. And of course that isn't it either because um, there's nothing to relate to and there's no, um, there's no, there's no things. And, um, my, I ran into these, um, these pitfalls in, um, I got in a lot of trouble with my teachers because I didn't know what my thesis was still. I had so much to talk about, but I didn't know what I was trying to say. <laughs> I can tell you got plenty to talk about, Avi. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was interesting because at the, by the, at the end of it, basically, 
I, I said um, I had no claim <laughs> as to what, and this is kind of a roundabout way because I haven't, you know, there's a lot of that went into what the sculpture was and whatever, but it's not important at all. Um, I just think it's very interesting how for this character that this would come up and uh, again and again, and it yeah. would just go nowhere. It would, it would, um, and there was, I guess, to sum it all up, there was a um, part of the mystery or somewhere there was a knowing that this whole um, like complexity of it was like entangled with just being the viewer or the experiencer and being apart from it and knowing it, but I couldn't say it. So no. I talk about these loops and I talk about uh, these paradoxes and it it went nowhere and <laughs> um, no. what's so incredible about it is is when I um, there was something um, that was just so enthralled in love with this message when I heard it from heard it from Tony I heard it from Jim Andreas um, because there, <laughs> it was just, um, there is not, there's nothing to get. There's nothing to have no. in life. There's no, um, there's nothing you can point out. Like when you say, this is it, there, you're not saying anything to anyone at all. No. And that is, I, I like how you say uh, pure love is like, but it's not because it's like, it's pure in that it um, doesn't say anything and it doesn't, yeah. um, it doesn't even recognize itself yeah. as something. No. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I just, um, I just wanted to share that in. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. No, it doesn't say anything. <laughs> Love's not a thing. None of these things that I'm talking about are things. <laughs> that you can go looking for and find, you know, that's the really shit part of this message is, you know, whatever, whatever words you hear that none of them exist. I don't care how many pop songs you've heard, you know, about this thing called love. It's not a thing. You know, crazy little thing or any other sort of thing. It ain't a thing. <laughs> a peace is not a thing love is not a thing freedom is not a thing you know all all the um all the buzzwords <laughs> you could say all the buzzwords of non-duality each one can be heard as, as something attainable something it's just not None of it. And none of those are separate. So, you know, the peace is not separate from love. Love is not separate from freedom. They're just a, they're pathetic attempts. All words are really very pathetic. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Sorry. I have it. Just let me finish. Thank you. Um, in comparison with, um, well, the words don't even, the, the words don't actually mean what they, they sound as though they mean something and they don't. They're just really pathetically futile attempts to, to point to how life is naturally. And all of those words are all completely empty and completely still and unmoving 
and completely silent. That's why they, it seems like most human beings spend in the story of their life, they've spent most of their time completely oblivious to all three of those things. <laughs> feeling trapped, feeling unease, lacking peace, and feeling unloved. That's the nature of separation. That's what self does in, in separation. It is is felt that I'm missing, I'm missing something really important, something essential, the essential nature of life. And all those three words are doing is pointing at this Empty, free love. I'm sounding particularly like a hippie today. <laughs> uh, and I really wanted to be, and there's some irony in that, because I always wanted to be a punk. But I, I tell you what, I'll, just as a, you know, as a... <laughs> Rather than I sound too happy, I'll add, I'll add anarchy to the list. And then, of course, I'm sort of a punkish hippie. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's anarchic as well. Anarchic in that it, it can't be we're anarchic in every way, actually. It can't be contained. It can't be boxed, it can't be known. It can't be had. That's pretty anarchic, really. And yeah, it's like you could say it's both wild and could curl up on your lap. So it's, you could say this is a bit like a, a tiger. The most, the most, the tiger that would just rip your guts out, but then equally might just curl up on your lap and just purr as you stroke it. There isn't a way. It's it's not one or the other. It's one and the other. This is always one and the other. And there is no one and the other. But in the appearance, everything is both. This is just the end, really, of saying there's, you know, I, I use the word this all the time, but I could use the word that all the time. Because this is that. And that is this. Whatever you're calling this or that. I mean, that's... <laughs> if I was trying to explain non-duality to um, someone who'd never heard it before, I might do that just, just playfully. Just say, well, what are you talking about? I'm just, and I just go, well, it's just, it's all non-duality is saying is that there is no difference between this and that. That that is this and this is that. Whatever you're calling this and whatever you're calling that, they're not two.
And the rest is then just trying to describe. It's just a pathetic attempt to uh, description. I must stop calling my attempts pathetic, but they are. Um, are trying to describe how it is when when this is that and that is this but this is still this and that is still that even when this is that so that's that i love that play on words hey tim hi jahara no yeah. heidi Heidi here. Hi, Heidi. Um, oh, am I getting an echo or is that just? You know, yes, fine. Okay. So, yeah, just I just wanted to say it seems like every um, every uh, attempt to describe anything yeah. uh, is is a story. Yeah, always. And, and it's and it's. When it's seen that that's a story, it, it, it it's still, I guess, it doesn't have the same, um, it doesn't feel the same. Whereas, you know, when, when it's, you know, when it's being seen as something that is real or something that has yeah. uh, solidity and that is, you know, yeah. the be all end all or, or whatever. Uh, yeah. And that can be very painful and yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, most of the, yeah, all the suffering, I would say nearly all the suffering is in the reality of my life. Yeah. And of course, the reality of my life, the story of my life is absolutely real because I feel absolutely real. Yeah. And it's I not feel, the, feel the feeling the feeling really, real. Yeah. Oh. A bo bodily felt sense of yeah yeah and um somebody asked me the other day Heidi so how how is it bodily felt now you know is, there's no bodily felt sense of self how does that feel <laughs> and again unlike when I felt myself to be me there's no saying how that feels it feels exactly how it feels which is, I would say, exactly the same. Because what, with, but without saying that they're my feelings of how it right. feels, that's all. Mm -hmm. and, it's so subtle, but it's so dry. And I haven't, and, and it's not that I've stopped doing that. It's just that it seems to have, that seems to have stopped. That's, you know, that's the best. But of course, Heidi, that's just another story. Yeah, exactly. Every time we speak to each other or when we think about something, we are just storytelling. Yeah. And that's why it's so fleeting. Like when you say, oh, yeah, what did yeah, I even yeah. just say? Because yeah. it's it's like that. Yeah. It, does, yeah. it doesn't have that glue. No. But it is, it is beautiful to be able to speak freely when you know you can't get this wrong. That is, that is wonderful. Yeah. That's really what I wish for all of you. You know, if I had, if I had, you know, the compassion is that that's the freedom for human beings. That's been spoken about, you know, in, in every spiritual, every spiritual, um, every spiritual path has spoken of this, this love, this freedom, this peace that passes all understanding. You don't know why you don't need to know why that's, that's the peace. All the needing to know is the suffering. And the suffering comes from me being real, you know, my reality. Now you could say there is real there is real there's there is reality, but it's just never been yours. It isn't yours. So what you're calling your reality now is all there is. And it's just not the, the owner is the illusion, not the reality. Because the way I speak about this, I'm, I don't say that this is a dream. I'm, I'm suggesting this is the only reality. This is. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. This this is the completion. This is whole. This is everything, as well as being completely empty. You know, it's not that there's there's something deeper or there's nothing hidden. There's there's you can stop looking. There's yeah. nothing. There's nothing else to find. Yeah, because every single conceptualized concept is a story, and it's based on absolutely nothing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's just, it's just based on the story of my, my desire to feel complete. That the whole of the story of self is is really around that sense of inadequacy or um, incompleteness. To feel that there's 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 something missing. Whether I say there's something missing is isn't is inside. It's it's is something missing from me or whether I say it's something outside, something missing in life about the world that needs completing, that needs managing and improving. They're both the same. They're the same story. (laughs) There's really nothing to do. Doing is of no relevance at all. Doing just naturally happens. But what we're speaking about, you, you could call being. Being takes no effort. Being takes no doing. Being has no requirement to be. I was, this this came up this morning. I was thinking about that. I am. I I I thought about the the spiritual inquiry. You know, the self inquiry of who am I? Who am I? And um, it just seemed very obvious that the 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 ambit of that is, you could say, is reality, and the I is the illusion. So the am that is being is the same as the same. What I call am is the same as the glass is. I mean, it's a it's a bit philosophical, but you know, just being what it is. And what are you being? Well, you don't need to know. You're just being it. You can never know. How would you know being? And that's what that's that's the great dilemma for self is it says I'm I am being so I'm separate from being I can find being it's very I mean it is that simple that's what self tells itself. And so I can find what I am. Well, (laughs) you've probably tried. I tried, you know, anyone who comes to this must have tried. And maybe you've tried and failed, you know, a thousand times. But self is that energy of, I need to find, I need to find that desire, that compulsion, really. It's a compulsion for self. And the peace is in the end of that, that energy, compulsive energy. Scott, yeah. Hey, Tim. Hey, everyone. Hi. Yeah, um, it's almost like uh, ac- activity, which used to be like the cornerstone of my identity, is becoming just as irrelevant as activity or, or sitting or... And um, I read once that we're not really people, but we're like a, a verb. Like it's not, there's not a Tim, there's just somebody Timming, you know, <laughs> or Scotting. And, and oh, yeah, you'd, you could say life Scotting, yeah. Yeah. And, and what we do is we identify with the, this body that we're in, thinking that if it's not doing that, it's not, we're not the body. It's, it's almost like the glue that was holding us to um, this limited identification. And, and, and this kind of laziness, apparent laziness, because it also feels really important what not doing suddenly after all these years. <laughs> Um, and, and irrelevant, 
like doing what doing for what it's, yeah. it's such a shock though it's such a shock because then and we're all surrounded by doers uh, yeah. people who are you know think that they're doing it and we and mm. of course i understand that yeah it's just weird it's yeah. weird because there's not really an explanation but there's not even a just i don't have to defend it i just no <laughs> it's no, funny that i would it, do it, it well one of the one of the most liberating aspects is the end of the one who needs to justify everything they do or don't do especially their laziness or what others perceive as their laziness their their lack of motivation <laughs> but um I mean that's not that's not a prerequisite for when self falls away that you're going to be lazy or either there might be an increase in doing you might some you know the the human being might suddenly be liberated to do exactly what he's always wanted to do and be madly motivated to do that there are you know don't yeah. think any, don't think there's any rules about it but if you've been a if you've been a compulsive doer there'll probably be less doing I would guess. I, I remember I had to give myself permission to be lazy at the beginning because I, I said, well, I know that I'm not lazy, so um, I can let myself do this yeah. because I know I'm not, it's not going to be like laziness forever. Mm. But otherwise, I think if, I, if there was any doubt, like, oh, God, that is lazy. And I see a lot of people do that. They come to a center and then after a while they go away because they're like, no, I got to. I've got stuff I need to do. <laughs> I got to save the planet. Mm. <laughs> the ego there's, is really incredible there, that it. There's is. really there's very important work to be done. You know. Yeah. Get off your lazy ass. Yeah. I don't think it'll ever run out of things to do as long. As no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> but don't worry. Or you leave that. Yeah, leave that to them. There's plenty of there's plenty of selves going to busy their lives away, in <laughs> making the planet safe. Don't worry, it's in good hands. <laughs> Thanks. Just leave it, just leave it to them. Uh, or or not, you know, it might be. You might become a a warrior. Who knows? One of one of the traps of of um of any of listening to anything, including this, is that you, you can hear it as a prescription. You know that the that, oh that's how it will be. That's how it should be. Oh, that's how it was for him. So that's how it was for her. So that's it's all nonsense. This has nothing to say about the way life is. Life simply is as it is doesn't have anything to say about how it should be or could be. That's why it's free. And of course, that's why it's not popular. So what's in it for me? absolutely nothing other than non-existence hmm not sure i like the sound of that too much moving on what is there in it for you there isn't anything in it for you. well it's worse than nothing isn't it much worse than nothing Has anybody got anything they'd like to um, share just before we finish? Yeah, Tim, I just wanted to say that uh, it seems like boredom has disappeared. And uh, I find that very interesting. It seems to be a big strategy of the me to be bored and to be constantly dissatisfied with the present. Yeah, yeah, true. And, uh, and it seems to be 
dissipating into zero. It has for years, but it's just something I noticed through these but, gatherings yeah. that, mm -hmm. that boredom is really just a sort of a bullshit strategy of, of, of <laughs> sure is it's like, yeah 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 it's almost like what you are is just not good enough so you have to go and become something yeah. else doesn't matter what it is but it has to be yeah. something else right yeah you have we to have a drink or you have to do something you know to be somehow important or more important than you were a second ago yeah without doubt so, yeah. yeah yeah that's thanks for sharing that and that's a really good point yeah so, so boredom is, is a sign when you don't, when you're not bored, it's a good sign. I think that you're actually, <laughs> well, you're not, well, you're the not thing is to yourself, right? Because, well, it, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's a good sign, but um, <laughs> life, life's more pleasant, life's more pleasant when you're not bored. Yeah, but it, it's sort of an ingrained strategy of the me to, to always be sort of niggling at you to do something, to become something. Yeah, because bored, boredom, 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 boredom lazy thing is like the yeah, emotion yeah. of boredom and laziness. Well, I'm not being boredom. Really, is saying I'm not doing anything useful, significant. Um, I'm I'm not doing anything pleasurable. I'm not doing anything that I'm going to get anything out of. Yeah, what's in also the outside thing too, where people expect an outside influence to entertain them, sort of thing. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, true. That's why television is so big. Yeah. That's just triggered a memory here of, I remember when this was sort of happening, you could say, this is a bit of story. And um, that I was, I was always a, a joker and a clown and, uh, and wanted to be attention seeker. People please are attention seeker. And um, I, I went out a couple of times and um, it just, it hit me like a sledgehammer that I hadn't spoken for about an hour. And I can guarantee you that had never happened previously in my entire life. And it really, it really hit me and it was quite shocking. <laughs> Obviously I've recovered from that since then. And now I can't shut the fuck up again, but it was really shocking because I didn't that that need because it is it was just a need that myself had that needed to get attention needed to needed to be affirmed needed to be noticed. Um, you typical extrovert, you could say psychologically. Um, and now if I go out. I don't really even like going out. So, you know, lockdown would have been dreadful for Tim and now it's perfectly okay. <laughs> and uh, like you say, Ian, um, freedom from the one who was bored. Yeah, that's, that may well be noticeable. It is a big change, but you don't notice it right away. Yeah. It's, it's so yeah, ingrained it's, that you yeah. think to yourself, one day you're just doing shit and you're not doing shit, but there's no reason for doing it or not doing it. It's not no. like you have some some agenda where you have to become something more no. important or, or that kind of nonsense. You're just no. being yourself. And yeah. it's not boring. It's just it's just what's happening. You know? Yeah, because like I do listening to you say stuff is is just as enjoyable as as anything else. And you know, it's it, this gathering is just as important as having the meal, but it's not less or more. It's not boring at all. That no. whole item of boredom is like a Western economic strategy to make you buy something. Yeah, it's Whatever a bit it consumerist. Is, it might be an idea. Well, it could be. Well, a, I I don't blame society for anything anymore. I I just blame self for everything. You know, I've only got one. I've only got one <laughs> scapegoat. There's only one scapegoat in this meeting, Ian, and it's you. Right, of course. <laughs> Because whenever, I'm used to that whenever though, see, I'm used to that. <laughs> I don't mean you personally, Ian. it's just so, it's always yeah. it's always self because that's all society is. It's just mm. an extension of self, you know. It's just big self, if you want, multi selves. Can I just say something? Uh, uh, something about what Ian was talking about. I really love that, Ian. Um, I had enrolled my daughter when she was eight years old into a, a school and it was called the unschooling school. It was 
kind of like a homeschool situation. Yeah. But um, they would welcome boredom with the kids and there was no structure. There was no. just, you know, materials available and they could basically do what they wanted. And a lot of the kids, when they'd first entered it, they'd come from a structured system and they just wouldn't be doing anything. And no. the teachers had no problems with that. There was no, you know, oh my God, we have to get them doing something. And sometimes the kids would go for days and they'd just sit and do nothing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, and my daughter just bloomed with all these ideas yeah. of things that she wanted to do. And she was enjoying doing those things because it was born of her own volition. Yeah. In a sense. Oh, without a doubt. If, um, if you want kids to be creative, allow them to be as bored as possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like they'll learn what they need to when they need to learn it. Yeah. I, was, I was watching some other information about homeschooling and they were saying, we don't really teach them anything. They'll come and ask when they want to know something. Like if they want to know math because they want to figure out a problem, then they'll come and yeah. they'll, they'll say, how the hell do I figure this out? And then we'll start teaching them what they need to know. And they'll, but it's only applicable to kids when it's really helping them learn something else. Like these things connect, but it's not like you have to sit in a class and learn certain thing at a certain time of day and go and do yeah. homework and all that shit. It's exactly, it's, it's, it's much more applicable and much more useful when they're actually learning something through that learning process. It's like, a, thanks Ian. Thanks Ian and Heidi. On. I'm going to have to stop you both because it's <laughs> okay. feeling, it's feeling far too much like school. And I just had a, I just had quite a horrific flashback and um, I'm feeling a little nauseous. I'm, no, I'm, a, I'm at a parents' <laughs> evening, and I'm I'm, I'm talking about um, <laughs> All right, Tim. children's welfare. Yeah, it's it's like oh those dark times. But yeah, boredom boredom's great. Yeah, no one to be bored. If you do feel bored, you might notice and um, notice who is it that's bored. Well, it'll be you, won't it? Yeah, don't, don't do that. That's a waste of time. Yeah, of course, it's always me that's bored. There's and and um, we, there's there's always plenty going on. Boredom is just that it's not what I want to be going on. You can you can sit all day and there's plenty going on. I can tell when my thirteen year old son is bored because his hand starts going to his pocket to pull out his cell phone. Oh, I dreaded it. I was really worried what you were going to say there, Scott. Cell phones are like the antidote to boredom, but the wrong way. I was just thinking whatever you were going to say about teenage boys when they're bored and where their hands go. I really, I thought time to end the meeting on that low note. He's on the low oh, end of the teenage spectrum, so we're well, still safe. Well, I just, <laughs> I'm absolutely, I'm uh, well versed in what teenage boys do when they're bored usually. <laughs> and, um, it may involve their mobile phone or not. Not just boys, Tim. <laughs> not just boys, sorry. <laughs> Let's not be sexist about it. Yeah. The original, the original PlayStation. Not just teenagers, <laughs> not just teenagers either. All right, I've got, Darren. I've got an eight year old. <laughs> uh, right. I thought you, do you know what? I thought you were going to say it was you. I thought you were speaking about, right. Some of us don't grow no. out of that. <laughs> no hope. You can count me in. I don't think anyone <laughs> grows out of that, Tim. <laughs> well, let's hope not. No. Yeah. Well, what a lovely way to finish. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Oh, <laughs> hey, Tim, I was bored about 10 <laughs> minutes ago, and, I, and then I... No, never mind. Then. <laughs> you, you were bored, and then we started talking about masturbation, and you got suddenly interested again, Joey. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, now, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> well lovely to see you all thanks thanks for coming thanks, um they'll be meeting um monday if you'd like to come thanks, and uh okay. if you okay. if you're not on the email my the email list for an invitation and you'd like to be just go to the website timcastthis.com and um email me via the website and i'll put you on the email list so that you won't have to look for the invitation that, that way, if you'd like to.
Also, you did, a nice, you did a nice talk yesterday for whoever wants to go to Nothing FM. That's that was nice. You might yeah, to... yeah, that was yeah. I enjoyed that. It was good. Yeah. So that's that's. Uh, I saw that um, Emerson put that out on. That's on YouTube now. If you want to have a look at that. If you do, if you want more of the same. <laughs> all right. Well, lovely to see you all. Um, thanks for coming. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Bye.